Fifty Shades of Grey. That's so last month. Oh, it me. is. Uh, the Thinking Woman's Fifty Shades of Grey is Fifty Shades of Grey Matter, as written by our guest, Dr. Carl Kruzelnitsky. Welcome, Dr. Carl. Oh, thank you, Dr. Natalie. And good morning, Dr. Nate and Dr. Sean. Oh, good very morning, excited. Dr. I love Carl. your outfit right now, first. I have to tell it is everyone. a corker. He's wearing a Dr. Seuss um, cat in a hat shirt, um, paired with some bright orange pants. Yeah, trust me, I'm a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great combination, as is this book. And um, does it get you hot under the collar, oh, this for a read? Well, especially a bit about the guy who didn't eat anything for a whole year. And what happened? He lost 126 kilograms. <laughs> he went to the hospital and said, look, I'm sick of being a big fat, big fat bugger. I'm just going to stop eating until I feel hungry again. And so he weighed over 200 kilograms. And then for a year, he had nothing. One year and 17 days, he had nothing to eat except water and vitamin tablets. And at one stage, um, his potassium levels went low. And so they gave him some potassium because that can knock off your heart. Yeah. Oh. And this is actually a dangerous activity. Whoa. I mean, from an evolutionary point of view, we can go without food for a day without any trouble at all. Yeah. And a couple of days. Yeah. But a year, well, people have died from it. But he went through okay and lost 126 kilograms, came in at 82 kilograms. Over the next couple of years, stay, went up to sort of 85, 88, but stabilised around there. How Eight exciting! Eight Eight for Any a year. exercise in that? I suppose you'd be Don't too... There's only to. one report in a medical journal about 20 years ago, so there's not a lot of detail. It was a record in the Guinness Book of Records, but they took it out because they didn't want people to try Sorry, and yes. do it because you can die from you know, heart abnormalities, your blood glucose can go so low, you get stupid and you walk in front of cars I mean, or your guts can go into problems. But Imagine so how it, hungry he was at the end. Well, it, so basically your body feeding on itself to yeah, keep you're itself You're eating up your own fat yeah, <gasps> and digesting it away. Fat is wonderful for that sort of stuff. So we, and it's so, so tasty. <laughs> well, it is. Especially pork and, oh, pe- yes, and, and duck. Tell them, fat Yum. equals flavour. We all yeah. know that. Now, I found something really interesting <laughs> yeah, in here. Just, I love this book because it just opened up and you'll find something interesting. Well, um, I have designed it to be the aver- each story to be the average uh, length of time of a male bowel motion. Oh, it's brilliant. <laughs> well, this is awesome. Um, tell everyone how they found Wi-Fi by looking at black, looking for black holes. So in 1982, um, Stephen Hawking, you know the wheelchair yeah, guy, yeah. he said, "Look, there's probably these mini black holes. Uh, by mini, I mean smaller yeah. than an atom, Pin size, p- and yeah. smaller than yeah, an atom, right, yeah. and weighing as much as Mount Everest." Yeah. And he said, "They're probably out there, maybe from theory, and we reckon they should evaporate. And if they evaporate, they'll give off a radio signal, and they're a long way away. So we'll have to be very sensitive to try and pick it up." So this guy. Uh, John O'Sullivan in 1982 started trying to find it but the radio signal by the time it got to Earth would have been so small so smeared out they had to invent special mathematics to try and tease it out of the background they, they went looking as it turned out, never found the black holes, but then it turned out to be exactly what you want for Wi-Fi. Because with Wi-Fi, if, if I'm trying to talk, suppose, you know, between a computer yeah. and the internet, yeah. if you've got a big fat dish and big power and you're broadcasting backwards and forwards, no worries. But with Wi-Fi, you've got tiny, tiny little amplifiers and, 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 and transmitters, tiny antennas, and all the signals overlap, and you've got 100 transmitters and all on the same frequency. And his mathematics turned out to be exactly what you wanted. And as a result, Result, Australia has got six hundred million dollars in royalties from all the computer people who make Wi-Fi. Another four hundred million to come, and yet when he invented this mathematics uh, back in nineteen eighty-two, there was no World Wide Web. What? No laptop computer. So he invented it without realising what its application what it would be. Well, well, Einstein came up with his theory of relativity, and today we use it for GPS. In other words, <laughs> on a Saturday <laughs> night, yeah. we're slightly in the Slightly inebriated people make their way to a pizza bar looking on a Saturday night for their healthy, saturated fats. They are using Einstein's theory of relativity, and they don't even know I it. knew it. I knew I was a scientist all along. Oh. That is amazing. That is incredible. So, so we've got Wi-Fi because some scientists went looking for mm. black holes. Love Dr. It. Carl, you're a, you know, a plethora of information all the time. Do you never? Are you always reading stuff? Are you always always investigating? I read ten thousand dollars worth of scientific literature every year, and I happen to have a couple of issues of uh, the New Scientist right here. So, so you you read that, and you abs- you've got a really good memory. You absorb. I've got it, a don't bad you? memory. Oh, really? So I have ha- it turned into stories. Okay. So a story is a whole block of information. Suppose I give you a thousand words yeah. in alphabetical order and say, remember these thousand words. Forget it. But suppose it's a story about how Zena and her best friend Gabrielle decide to have a nude mud shower <laughs> and then they <laughs> fight the aliens and then they get lifted to heaven. I'll say you this remember movie. that whole story. Yeah, you <laughs> remember that story. Yeah. So your brain is wired up to remember stories. Okay, it's part of us being together. So I, I use that by remembering stories. Well, as yeah. you know, by listening to our show, we usually answer every question that you have. <laughs> Um, and we answer it sufficiently and yes. um, Deeply, correctly. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we thought answer. we'd give someone else a go to do that very Good thing. Good experience, kid. 
Dr. Carl, can I struggling. ask you a question? Because we all get up at 4 a.m., right? That's unnatural. And but true, we yeah. have, I have long held the belief that, because people go, oh, it's not that hard. You, you just go to bed earlier. If you, mm-hmm. even if you get, say, seven hours sleep, Yep. But you're getting up at 4 a.m. It's not the same as getting seven hours sleep and getting up at 8 a.m., is it? It's not quite the same, but you can adapt to it. But the thing is that the sleep that we have nowadays is different from what we had before there was electricity. If you go back to the really? records, what would happen was that people would go to bed when the sun went down then they'd fall asleep. Yep. They'd then wake up around midnight, uh, smoke a pipe, have sex, love each other very much in a very special way, uh, maybe have a little talk and then go back to sleep again. At midnight. It was part <laughs> of the different pattern. Right. Nowadays, we've been ripped off. What's happened? is that since 1950, the productivity per person has gone up by 400% Mm. per person. I'm feeling it here. And if if there was any justice, we'd be working 11 hours a week to get the right benefits that we had way back in 1950. Instead, uh, the quality of life is about the same, but we're working longer hours. Mm. We got ripped off. And somebody's benefiting, and it's not us. <laughs> and what's happened is, if oh, you follow that? the Wilfredo Pareto law, yeah. uh, the money is accumulating in a small number of wealthy people. So you got you know one percent of the population with 70, 80 percent of the wealth, and it's and that's why we can't sleep. That's right. And and, <laughs> and going back to sleep, um, well, as a parent, I know that sleep is better than sex. So the, you, <laughs> so, so long as you go to bed early and wake up early, but you can have naps during the day. The thing is to have lots of sleep. Sleep is good for you. Mm, okay. All right, noted. Uh, Dave's in Secret Harbour. Hi, Dave. Hi, how are you going? Good, Dave. Dave. Now, you've got a question for Dr. Carl? I have. Um, I, know, I know it's to do with the inner ear, but you know when you get drunk uh, and you're standing upright, everything's great, and when you lie down, ready to go to sleep, everything starts to spin a bit. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. I'm not sure. What, how does alcohol affect the inner ear in that situation? Right, okay. And, it's, and by the way, you can do an experiment where as you go to sleep, you notice it spins one way, and when you're waking up and you're getting even more sober, it spins the other oh, way. Is that true? Right? So what happens, yeah. just imagine that the inner ear is like a little ball floating inside a big hollow sphere, yeah. yep. right? And the alcohol, and it rests on some hairs. Yeah. And depending on which hairs it rests on, it tells you which way is up. As the alcohol floats through into your body it's got less density than water and so it slowly comes through and so the density of the hairs is, is less and the density on the inside is higher so you've got this mismatch because this alcohol is you know, going through your yeah. whole system then as it leaches out the other way then you spin the other way it's due to the different density acting on the mechanisms and there's five separate mechanisms in your inner ear it's the most horrible so feeling it isn't it yes yeah, so oh, don't pour vodka in your ear Dave yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the so rule right. of that story and leashes in case Brook, hi, Alicia. Hi. Hi, Dr. Alicia. Good morning. You got a question for us? Yeah, um, this is for my husband. He has always wondered why when you do Listerine and mouthwash, when you take a big breath, it's nice and cold. Um, often there's a tiny bit of alcohol in there and the alcohol evaporates rapidly, so the residual alcohol um, evaporates away and then that takes needs energy to do that and the energy comes from inside your mouth from the heat. That's one. The other one is that there's mint in there. And amazingly, uh, mint acts on a receptor in your tongue, which is the same receptor used for cold. So if you have some mints and not not mint, Mint, not not (laughs) Not not mince meat, but (laughs) minters. Yeah, if you have uh, a little uh, more than one mint, (laughs) if you have more than one mint, and then you have some cold water, it's extra cold. It's like you've had a lot of mint or lots of cold. So we should get the same effect from drinking like a mojito because that's got mint. And alcohol, and yes, but I, I've never noticed that effect. Ah, because my head's spinning too much. Probably. For the other effect, <laughs> and the reason that you feel hot when you have chilies, the same receptor used for heat is the receptor used by the chemical in chilies called capsaicin. Oh, there you oh, go. Good on you, Alicia. Thank you. And to finish off, Matt from Kundula. Good morning, Dr. Matt. Good morning. G'day. So I'm I'm ringing up and asking why, uh, like in drag racing. I love drag racing. Mate, oh, so do I. Oh, man, I've been there a few times, and I've actually been there in uh, Shrapnel Alley between the two cars, where if anything goes wrong, you get shredded into a thousand pieces by bits and edges. <laughs> <laughs> all that happened in my cases, was that, and, and most people, is that you end up with huge amounts of rubber dust all over you. Oh. oh yeah. I love the way that they take off, and they spin the tyres. The tyres don't get good traction until they're at a temperature of about 9 degrees centigrade. Mm. So they deliberately accelerate hard, snap loose mm. the tyres, and then let them spin, and that gets them up to 9 degrees. And then as you're accelerating down the track, they're cooling down and gripping and melting and leaving behind part of themselves. By the way, what were you going to ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, my question is uh, kind of related to that. And the question is, why in drag racing, unlike other kinds of uh, motoring, we, we think that um, 
if you're going to go fast and you're going to accelerate fast, you want to have complete traction to the ground, and that's what all the tyre companies tell us. But in drag racing, especially in a top fueler, and they've got 8,000 horsepower the top sitting fuelers. there. Yeah. Mm. Top fuel is great. But um, why do they spin the tyres slightly? The best way, the fastest way to get down the track is if the rear tyres are slightly spinning faster than you're rolling down the surface. Why is that? Whoa, oh. I'm not too sure I know that one. I would have thought, my, my understanding was that what they wanted, if, if you just got rubber to rubber traction, you're looking at about one or two Gs. But if you've got the rubber cooling down and melting and gripping onto the road as it's going along, which is why you have that slight spin to keep it melting, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look to see whether the rolling friction is different from the static friction, number one, or number two, whether the theory about the tyre cooling down and leaving part of itself on the road is the current theory they're going from. Don't know. Wow. Ooh. A to be continued. Oh, Matt. You stumped him, Matt. Matt. Easy. Good one, Matt. <laughs> Matt, how long have you thought about this for? Um, well, I mean, with drag racing, I've got a lot of questions, but... Um, <laughs> 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 He's very passionate. <laughs> good on you, Matty. I love it, Thank Matt. you, Dr. Matty. All right, good. Excellent. You can uh, pick up uh, Dr. Carl's book, Fifty Shades of Grey Matter, just in time for Christmas. What do you know? Uh, Excellent and, and find out why when you walk into a room you forget stuff. Yeah, why is that? Well, it's because of our evolutionary history. For 600,000 years we've had language, we've been people in groups. Yeah. And the world has been cruel to us. They're always trying to get us. <laughs> and so in a jungle, well, there's all these killer gorillas. Yeah. So when you're in a jungle, you should concentrate on being in the jungle and look out for the killer gorilla. But as soon as you go onto the open savannah and then you're worried about the killer kangaroo, it is no benefit to you to think about what was behind you. Yeah, right. You've got to forget the past and concentrate on what could kill you right now. So you oh. leave the living room, you leave the studio, and you go to the tea room and look out for the things that can kill you. And it makes... <laughs> so, therefore, you walk into the tea room, you say... In this office, it's the milk. What I come here for? <laughs> what I come here for? <laughs> right, because it's part of our wired up evolutionary history to forget the past and just deal with the threats that right here. Now right I feel now. so much better about I love it. it. I love to walk in a room and make sure um, I can spot the things going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm going to try it every time. Go and meet and touch if you like, Sean, Dr. Carl, today at Dimmicks <laughs> in the Hay Street Mall. He'll be signing books at 12:30 and that free event tonight at Aquinas College Hall at 6 p.m. You don't even need to book. You can just rock up. Thank you for joining Pleasure, us, Dr. Dr. Carl. Thank you. Fifty Shades of Grey Matter is the book. It's wonderful to have you in the studio. Answer your questions and sounds like you need to go to the drag racing again. Yeah. <laughs> this is what your mum should be reading, everyone. Ew. Yes, it should She's be. reading the other one. <laughs> Ew. No, <laughs>